Okay, we're back again, and Matt wants to show you how to trim some of these pictures off, just to get an idea of how it's done. He's got a special little tool here he wants to tell you about, his favorite one. Yeah, so I use this for both fly traps and pitcher plants. It's a pretty nice tool. Uh, it's called a Fisker's Micro Tip uh, Pruning Shears, or trimmers, I guess. And uh, you can pick them up on Amazon for around 12 or 14 bucks. Um, they work really great because they're fine point, really fine point you can get in between the leaves and try not to damage any of the healthy pitchers or leaves on fly traps. Uh, fly traps is helpful to have like a pair of tweezers to lift the dead ones away if, if you want to trim them. We usually just wait till they dry up and they come off with a tug. But for Saracenia, they'll keep those brown pitchers all forever basically. And it's a lot easier and better for the plant to just trim those off, let light get to the rhizome to kill any kind of mold or fungus that might grow, and also lets the new growth have sunlight as soon as it emerges. So what I'm gonna do is just go through and look for anything that's dead or pretty much done for the season, cut it off, and uh, I'll leave probably most of the green stuff, but you could cut that off too, a lot of growers do. So, I mean, there's nothing really to it, but I guess I can show you guys. Um, so you can see these two pictures here. They're both pretty yellow. And uh, so I'll just come in with the pruning, pruning shears and cut that one off. Come over here, same deal, get it down. You don't have to get that close, but I usually take it down within an inch or so of the, of the rhizome, the bulb underground. And that's really all there is to it. So I'm gonna go through and cut everything off that needs to be. And I'll give you guys an update later before I spray and show you what I use to, to treat these guys with in terms of fungicide for the winter. So that's all I got. See you soon after the trimming is done. Hi there everybody, it's Leah and Matt at Fly Trap Store. Hello again guys. We are doing an after. We had it before where we had all these pictures that needed to be trimmed and Matt has done that. Let me do a quick sweep for you. Start over here, they look so pretty now. So clean and pretty. Here's the Jonesy eyes everybody was interested in after the video. And go around here. Now this tray here, why weren't these trimmed? Yeah, so these two trays, they're, this is Daniel Rood and uh, Leucophaga Tarnock, and I just haven't repotted them yet. That's the only two trays I didn't get to repotting this summer. So I'm just going to wait to trim those back as I repot them probably next month or so. Okay, that's a good tip for other people. And then in the back here we have all this gorgeousness. There's the AJO1s. Those look the best. Y'all should snatch some of them up from our store site. Let's come around here with these trays here. These have a lot of plants in them. Yep. These are all from Alice, the really nice Flava Oreo. Yeah, flower. she had them in one pot. <laughs> okay. So, so now you see where we're at. And yeah, so I was just going to go through what I'm going to do today. And I'll do this in all four of the greenhouses. This time of year, I like to trim things back just to basically check in on the plants, see how they're doing and take note of any kind of problems. Sometimes we get pest problems in the fall, especially mites come in, spider mites on the fly traps in particular. And so when I do the trimming, I'm actually just going through and looking at the plants real closely, taking note of anything that might need to be addressed. And in the other greenhouse, which I'll give a tour of later, the bigger greenhouse, I did in fact find some powdery mildew or some sort of white mold. Um, <laughs> So I decided to go ahead and do a spray of all the greenhouses just as a preventive measure right now. And this one, I didn't notice any problems with any of the plants in here, but I got a bunch of plants from a lot of different sources this summer and I'm guessing one of them came with that. And uh, so this should take care of it though. What this is, is it used to be called Ortho Disease Be Gone. I think they've rebranded it now as Garden Disease Control, but it still has the same active ingredient, which is 30% chlorothalonil. You can't read the label here. It's super no. tiny print. <laughs> but uh, basically, it's a non-systemic fungicide. It's really good at dealing with... Uh, it helps prevent crown rot and fly traps. So I'll, I'll spray the fly traps with it too. But it also knocks down algae, gets rid of any kind of mold or fungal growth, and uh, just prevents any kind of diseases, basically. Uh, it's a good wide-spectrum fungicide to use. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to okay. go through. I got it mixed up here. Mm -hmm. It's two tablespoons per gallon, which is 10 milliliters okay. uh, per gallon of water. And it's just a topical spray. You got to try to cover all the plant parts because it 
has to make, make contact with whatever you're trying to get rid of. So okay. I'll go and what it. what is this thing? I mean, we don't actually use Roundup. Yeah, no, this was just a an inexpensive sprayer that I picked up on Amazon. I think it was twenty bucks for the sprayer, and it works really well. So. What are they called if people want to get one? Do you know? Uh, it's just a sprayer. Just I mean, a sprayer. Uh, yeah, like a garden sprayer. Garden but this sprayer. is this one's made by Roundup, but it's never had Roundup in it. Okay. Of course, I wouldn't spray it if on the plants yeah. if it had. But okay, okay. And I just wanted to show. I mean, you can see just by looking at these because they've been trimmed how much easier it would be to look for any like white powdery substances or any issues and gray mold is whereas like to contrast over here uh no you're not gonna find anything in there you'd have to search pretty hard so that's one benefit of trimming is you can see more easily any issues that might be presenting themselves okay you ready yep all right guys thanks so much Okay, here we are. A, a spraying we will go. A spraying we will go. decided that it might be a good idea to show the spraying. I'm like, there's really nothing to it. You just squeeze the handle hey. and it sprays the white stuff out. So I would want to know. So basically, I just, uh, it's probably dialed a little, but I'll try to get a good coating on all the leaf sides. So I'll come around from the other angle after I do this side. Yeah, he just sprayed me accidentally, so I'm taken <laughs> care of. No mildew for me. And these guys, they're so thick, it's gonna... I don't want to waste a whole bunch of this stuff on them, but just give them a little dosage here. And back in here. get down on the rhizome of these guys. Is there a certain time of year that you know of where it would be better to do this or does it not matter Typically when? in the winter the, is whenever you start seeing the gray mold creep in. Oh. So that's usually when I do it in the fall or winter. Okay. Uh, you know the fly traps seem to get that crown rot more commonly in late summer. So last year I did a spring sometime in midsummer and it seemed to help prevent it. We didn't have as many problems with crown rot on the fly traps last year. So okay but yeah pretty much this is kind of winterization preparation here um it's going to be cold and and wet in our climate here it rains a lot in the winter so this spray will just help prevent any kind of issues that could come up Do any certain types of pitcher plants have more problems than others that you've noticed? Or? You know, yeah, because they all grow slightly differently. So these Jonesy I hear grow in pretty tight clumps. And those, especially growing outside in, this, in the winter here, will tend to get rot pretty mm. easily. But it's So um, that when they grow in tight clumps like yeah, that? Yeah, just because you don't get as good of air movement and as much sun down there to kill, oh, yeah. to kill the al uh, you know algae or actually it's bacteria or mold or fungus that starts. Um, you know, the rain and the wind will blow it away and wash it away and the sun with its UV rays will kill it. But if it's really dense and it can't get down in there, then those are the plants you'll usually have more problems with. Give them an extra dose. Yeah, I'll just come back just around. Just use the extra. Well, I got to do the other three greenhouses too. So this is just... Okay. I'm just gonna get make sure I got them all pretty good in here. Okay. Looks relatively easy. Yeah. What if you don't have one of those sprayers? Can you just use a spray bottle? You could. Yeah. yeah. It would Thanks. just take a lot longer. Obviously, if you have a small collection, you could just use one little hand sprayer. Mm-hmm. But okay. that's it. Moving on to the next greenhouse. Okay.